Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. And today we're going to be talking about some programming ideas that you might not be familiar with or ideas that maybe you've heard and you just didn't care about because you thought they wouldn't bring you any practical value. I'm going to try and change your mind on that. So today we're going to be talking about decoupling, what loose and strong coupling is, and encapsulation. So before you is my game project that I'm working on. This is a personal project currently titled Project Dual. It's going to be a TCG with a strong PVE and PVP elements inside of it. So this is a really great project, I think, to show off the idea of coupling and encapsulation because it's something that I'm working on it right now. And as I'm adding those specific ideas into the code and how I code it, it's making my game run a lot smoother. So let's talk about how that's happening. First off, the idea of coupling is when objects or classes know about each other. So in general, this isn't a bad thing. The problem comes into hand when it is strongly coupled. So this right here is an example of something being strongly coupled. My player object is directly setting a card's variables right here. And this is taking the assumption that my player knows how to manipulate a card and what it can do and how it should be doing it, and it's gonna go ahead and do that directly. If I go into my card and I change these variables, or I change what these variables do in the step and draw event that I've got in there, all of a sudden, this code is not gonna work, my game is not gonna function as it should, all because they are strongly coupled together. This idea that they are interconnected in a way where if you change one thing, it breaks the other. And I am sure you have run into this in your own games one way or another, because it's the most common practice and it's very accepted. It's easy to do. It's great for getting prototypes off the ground. That's why I have it here. My game is coming along, but it's not to the point where I'm going in and refactoring and making sure that everything is exactly how it should be. My game is still in the early stages, and so there's some strong coupling in here. But this is bad. And you probably know why, because you've experienced it. So what's a good way, a good alternative to this? Well, the idea of loose coupling. So right here is a great example of a loosely coupled tie to the card. When I first started and I wanted to move a card from point A to point B, I would go in and actually change the X and Y of the card and I would change the scale to help it grow or shrink and I would tell it exactly where to go and control all of that. Well, that got really tedious, so I created a function called move card to. And in the card, this function now controls where it's supposed to go. So this sets goal X and Y, and in my step event, when it's got a goal X and Y, or it hasn't shrunk or grown as it should, this takes care of all that. So now changing these specific values makes the card do something but I do not want to specifically come in and change those values in my player object because I don't want to know how it works. When I first started it, the card just snapped directly to where it was supposed to go. It worked, didn't look very good, but you know, when you're starting out, you don't necessarily need it to look pretty. But when I got around to it, I upgraded the movement system, but I didn't change how I called the card moving. So I was still calling move card two, but all of a sudden, when I moved it somewhere, it now moved gracefully there. It's, it, it zoomed over there and stopped, and then it would zoom back to where it was supposed to go, and all of a sudden my game looked a thousand times nicer and played better, and I didn't change anything inside of my player object. I changed it all inside of my card. This function, this step event, I added, but my player didn't need to know about it. And that's the idea behind loose coupling. The less your objects know about each other, the less likely it is that your game is going to 
break when you make a change. So right now, if I make any change to my card and how these variables and these ones are interacting with it, my player code is going to just stop working. It's going to fail. And I'm gonna to have to come in and debug that. And that's exactly what happened earlier this week. I spent an hour or more figuring out that I needed this line of code for a specific bug I ran into. This wouldn't happen if I had a function that said current card dot set card values. Instead of setting all these to false or true or whatever, I would call that function and it would take care of all of that. That's on the to-do list, but you know, to-do lists get very, very large when you're working on a game prototype. Now, before we get into encapsulation, there's this really great summer sale I'm running this summer, and you should definitely know about it. Check it out. So we've already kind of touched on encapsulation, but I want to go a little more in depth on it. The idea of encapsulation is to create loose coupling in your code and objects. Just like I have right here with the move card to, this encapsulates everything about how to get one of my cards from point A to point B. My player knows nothing about how it works. It doesn't need to know. And that creates the loose coupling that prevents all of those bugs and errors that you'll run into when you make a minor tweak somewhere. Encapsulation is your friend. The idea is to enclose all of the inner workings of an object into functions that other objects can call. So if we go and look at my card, I've got a lot of functions in here. And I'm going to continue to add more. And that's because my player, my enemy, whatever it is, it should never be directly manipulating my card's data. This is what we would also call an interface. It's a way for other objects and classes to interact with this card, but in a way that is not going to create bugs and errors and issues because the card says, Hey, if you want to create a new card, you can call set card info. And I know exactly what this is going to do. And if I was really on top of things, I'd have an actual function description here as well, but we'll get to that eventually. But this function says, Hey, this is how you set the information for a card. Now you don't need to know how I'm going to do it, but all you need to know is if you pass in the information from a card, I will make sure that I return an object with all of that information and that is a card. Same thing for when I move it to my hand. I just need to know the hand size because it determines where it goes and which player, whether the player or the enemy. So all of this is encapsulated information. It's an interface that I've created for my card that my player and my enemy can both use very quickly, very easily, and they don't have to ever worry about changing how they call it. Same thing inside of my player. Like even in my own object, encapsulation saves so much time. When I need to do something like drawing a card, well, when you do something more than once, you wanna make a function, that's a good practice as well. But this idea, is the same for encapsulation where, well, I don't need to know how I draw a card. I do a lot of things because there's a lot to drawing a card inside of a game. But all of that aside, all I have to do when I'm playing my game is just call this function draw card and it's gonna take care of everything else. When I wanna change a state, when I wanna select a card, when I want to count the cards, organize my hand, do all these things, they are in their own functions, and I can just call them, and I'm done. So my step event isn't going to run into issues 
drawing a card. The issue <laughs> is going to be in my function, which is fine. Because if I change the function, then I would expect some problems, you know, you know, some debugs and have to figure out exactly what's going on. But if I come in here and I make a change to this variable in a different object, and then I change how that object reacts to that variable, well, now all of a sudden, this is strongly coupled, it's not encapsulated, and one change is a cascading effect of failures and bugs that just wastes your time. So practice loose coupling and practice encapsulation with lots of functions. Do not be afraid to go overkill on your functions. In my opinion, it is better to have more functions for little things than to have less. This interface that I've created for cards for my player, it's going to grow. It's going to grow tremendously from where I'm at right now. I am just in the beginning stages of this game. I've got a long way to go, and I'm going to continue to add more and more functions. And that's fine. Don't be afraid to have dozens. Don't be afraid to have hundreds if your game is huge and that object is essential for all sorts of things. But keep your objects and your classes loosely coupled to prevent those really frustrating errors where you change one object and everything fails in another. If you have any questions about what I covered today, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. And that's what I've got for you. So as I like to say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.